Hello everyone. Um, today's topic at hand is going to be uh, mass fractions. Um, there's not too much theory behind it. Um, the, in your textbook you'll see page 53 they do talk about the mass and mole fractions. Um, it's not anything complex chemistry wise. Uh, you can think of it as uh, you know you have a box of Napolitan ice cream you know and uh, you've got specific amount of uh, percentage of strawberry, vanilla, and chocolate ice cream. Uh, maybe, you know, somebody decides to uh, just eat the strawberry ice cream. You know, some people just want to watch the world burn. And then they, they'll take that box, they'll put it back in the freezer, now you've got only 50% chocolate and 50% vanilla. And then, um, yeah, so then it'd be up to you to have to go back and uh, recalculate the mass fraction or the mole fraction of this new this new mixture that was now changed. Now unfortunately uh, you won't be doing questions about ice cream in your test or your assignments but uh, I do have here, you'll see in the description of the video a question that uh, we have here and this, it's about uh, a miner and he finds a piece of ore in the ground and uh, you know it has uh, three uh, three metals which are gold, silver and copper. Um, questions might not be you know anything to do with mining sometimes those can be completely just uh, m uh, liquid uh, liquid mixtures with molality and whatnot so make sure you understand uh, all these different types of uh, what what state of matter these can be in. Regardless of whether it's solid, liquid, or gas, much of the mass the much of the math is the same. So we will go ahead here and do this solid uh, question. Okay. So uh, at the top of my video here, these are the molar masses that I'm using. Um, yeah, they come from Google. They're not from your book or anything like that. Um, and uh, yeah, these are the numbers you're going to use. Uh, we'll worry about the sig figs after. I know that's always a big issue. Yeah, just, you know, when you get the numbers down, worry about the sig figs after. They're only worth two marks at the end of the problem. You're better off getting most of your numbers right before then. Okay, so the first question, right? Uh, find the final mass of the ore after the removal of the silver. Okay, so first thing foremost, you know, we need to find the mass compositions of each individual, t individual type of, uh, of precious metal uh, before there was any change, all right? So we're going to go ahead and do that math right here. Now, um, here we have, okay, so first I just should say G is for gold, S is for silver, C is for copper, obviously. So here for gold, we have the proper setup, you know, dimensional analysis. This is the way uh, Dr. Burke is going to want it on your exams and your assignments. This is how we do it at the proper chem engineering, okay? So here for the gold, all right, we take a total mass times the 25 kilograms of gold per 100 kilograms, 100 kilograms total, 25%, in other words. And that gives us a mass of 31.25 kilograms of gold in this piece of ore. And now underneath here, okay, we have the simple uh, masses of f uh, silver and copper, respectively. Keep in mind, I wrote it the quick way. This is not the proper command way. It's just in the interest of time, that's how I wrote it. Now, this is the proper way. Remember that, okay? Now, after we've gone the mass of each individual um, species, we then need to set up our mathematical equation to find out the new amount of silver that's going to be in the new mixture, okay? So the problem states that we want now the new mixture has to be 28%. So we know that 0 0.28 has to be equal to, well, what's a fraction? A fraction is always something over the combined something. Now the combined something here is obviously the unknown plus, okay, the only two that did not change in this problem was the gold and copper. So in the new mixture, obviously, the gold and copper have to be the exact same amounts that we had before. And of course, X is obviously that new amount of silver that has been reduced that we are trying to solve. So if we do the cross multiplication for this part, we will get a um, new amount of silver, which is 28.194 kilograms. 
And then we take that number and we simply add it up to the original gold and copper, which have not budged whatsoever. And that gives us a new total mass of our ore of 100.694 kilograms. Okay? And um, in this case, sig fig wise, um, we have, okay, we had 125 kilograms that was stated in the problem. Uh, that was three sig figs. So, proper final answer would probably be 101 kilograms, three sig figs. That's what was provided to us beforehand. Okay, so that pretty much wraps up part A of the question. Now we're going to go to part B. So now we're going to go with the second part of the question, okay? And we're going to take the um, mass that we found from part A for each uh, precious metal. Uh, for the before part, you know, before any switching around with the, our extraction. So we're going to take 31.25 kilograms of gold and we're going to do again dimensional analysis here and we're going to divide that by the molar mass in this case for gold, 196.97 kilograms and this will give us the amount of kilomoles, okay? Keep in mind, there's no difference between kilomoles and um, moles. They're just a thousand times different. Same same math. Okay. And here for silver and copper, exact same thing we have to do, and you get the numbers here. Okay. Now, once you find all three kilomole amounts for each precious metal, you will then add them to find the combined molar amounts that are inside our piece of ore. Okay. Now, with this piece of ore we can finally find now the molar fraction for each precious metal and again simply take um, each precious metals uh, amount of moles divided by the total amount of moles um, times it by 100 because we want percentage and for gold in this case we get 12.26 percent uh, gold that's the molar fraction okay same thing you do here for silver and copper and this is again before the uh, extraction of silver. And now for the after the extraction we have the numbers down here. Um, really nice you, gold and copper just copy paste that free marks. The only thing we gotta really worry about is the silver changing. Um, so you just take that reduced amount of silver that we found that uh, 28.194 kilograms. You take that divided by the um, uh, silver's uh, molar mass and you now get the amount of moles and with that we of course get a new um, total amount of moles in our piece of ore so the fractions will shift and everything should make sense that the gold and copper amounts increased while our silver amount decreased okay and that would pretty much finish up for part B of our question and question C is simply a question about money, which I think most of us plan on making with this degree. Now, uh, simply take the price of silver, which was um, 655 uh, dollars. Uh, per kilogram times it by the change in um, kilogram amounts so we had 52.5 kilograms of silver minus 28.194 kilogram S that gives us a nice gives us fifteen thousand nine hundred thirty three point eight dollars worth of silver was extracted wow doesn't that make you want to switch and become a mining engineer oh, I'm just kidding guys anyway that pretty much does it uh, for mass fractions um, so again you know uh, it could be something like this, you know, extracting rocks out of the ground. It could be something to do with uh, liquid mixtures. Much of the math is the same, the concept is the same. Um, it's never going to be an ice cream, unfortunately. 
So come the test, you know, you want to be able to have the whole sort of process mapped out on these um, mass fractions, okay? So first up, what we did, we did to find the mass amounts, okay? Now this part here, it's you have to do this whether you're finding mole fraction or whether you're finding the mass fraction, okay? And then for part A, you know, it, it was here we they're giving us a new desired mass fraction for silver and you know, how do we equate a new how do we make this number 0 0.28 is equal to what it's equal to the new unknown mass amount divided by itself plus everything that was unchanged and you know part b was really about the mole fraction okay so you have to understand there's a big difference between the mass and the mole fraction and in part b you know it was take those mass amounts and find out how much uh, find out their molar equivalents okay and through that again it was just after that finding the mole fraction and you have to understand you know they're two separate math calculations and uh, but apart from that guys this is it thank you for listening goodbye